Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review for the week ending February 2nd, 2024. We are looking at a monthly chart of the S&P 500, which is also the beginning of February. So we should start with the monthly charts across the board. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. Been a lot going on in the personal life. So we're going to try to make these more regular again. Let's take a look. We've got an all-time high monthly close here at 42.88. Previous was 474.96, right? This is bullish, this is not bearish. Looking at the weekly. Oh, and again, if it's not clear, histogram is higher now than it was before. Previous time it was like that, it was back here. Previous time, back here. Previous time, back here. Okay, so we can go back and look at all these points in time. And you'll find that this is a very bullish period of time. You could find that it is something more like this that we are going through in ABC right now. And this is where the leaders did their thing. Seasonality wise, it's an election year. I wouldn't expect them to rock the boat. That being said, there's plenty of bearish things that we could talk about. I just want to point out the obvious things, things that are sticking out to me. The weekly. Again, there are no divergences here, guys. This is a new high in PPO. 3143 was the previous. 3219 is the current. Weekly all-time high close. We're looking at 509 as the FIB target, that general area. I like to keep things pretty simple, which is why I've taken all of these other things off the chart until they're required. Why do I say that? At this point, I just want you guys to look at the EMA5 SMA10 cross. It's right here. If I put more things on the chart, you guys won't look at it. Okay? All right, obviously, I like to have these things on the chart for many reasons. It can be very, very helpful. When I do this, people ignore the simple moving average cross that is driving the momentum on the short term time frame. So we'll remove some of these things. We'll take the volume by price off and we'll, we'll take a look at it here in a little bit. But when you're at all time highs, there is no supply up here. You zoom into the daily, we do have a bit of a divergence. Okay. So on the daily time frame, we could be putting in a top. We've already pulled back to the 22 times, basically three times if you want to include this. This thing from the October lows is three months in. Again, this move here was about four months and two weeks before it started the correction. So we could we could have another month before we ultimately pull back. It could happen this month. Not really sure. Point is, Every single time frame is telling me that the momentum is up. We are looking for all time highs. The histogram on uh, the quarterly chart is still negative though. Okay, and this is of note if they can't flip this back bull. If they flip this back bull, we have a different discussion. Right now we're just, it's of note, but we're looking for a daily reversal any reason here on the weekly for price to get back to mean and ultimately like you know i almost feel like putting boundaries here kind of like rsi does pbo doesn't have any boundaries but i just want to point out like this is kind of what what happens here right there are extremes in momentum and then the zero line acts as mean there are extremes in price right we see that here in the bollinger band but the 20 acts is mean. Okay, and we look we look at this for a few reasons. Right now we have a, a divergent high, meaning the high back here that occurred December 19, we were very confident that it would not be the high because momentum had peaked. Momentum peaks long before price, meaning you would expect a peak in momentum to occur before a peak in price. Okay, that being said, we've just got a divergence, nothing more, nothing less. The bulls are in charge. Just want to point this out. SP 500 
looks amazing, okay? QQQ looks amazing, pretty much the same chart. Monthly, all-time high, close last month. Okay, you look at the quarterly. I mean, everything here looks exactly the same. Go to the weekly. Okay, we've got a bit of a divergence here on the weekly. So a little less clarity there. But in general, this looks great. There's no reason for panic over here in Qland. And again, if I'm just using some subjective, I know this is subjective, guys. So bear with me. I like to overlay objective and subjective analysis to give me some conviction and ideas and things like that. There's nothing that says we couldn't hit up 600 into election. 560, 502, much more likely, but sometime this year into the election. That's what I'm looking for. And that's the blow off top that I that I see coming. Is it coming this month? Probably not. Probably short term weakness, something like this, before she ultimately continues her march. Again, I'll pull up the seasonality chart. We'll take a look at that. But by the dip, there's nothing to be, you know, overly concerned with here. A pullback to the blue line would be normal. A pullback uh, even to, to the 80 would be normal. Uh, if you don't like moving averages that change, then these are the price levels that would be perfectly normal to pull back to. And we've already pulled back to them once. So again, the likelihood of pulling back all the way to 393 from 430 is pretty low at this point. However, it could happen. The much closer level is about 411. QQQ looks amazing. SMH looks amazing. Nothing wrong here, guys. These are the things that we want to look at. I, you know, I really don't need to spend any more time talking about them. They are in very bullish setups. Buy any dips that you get into the yellow line on the monthly time frame. Right now for SMH, that's 176. For QQQ, we're talking about 413. So that's that's where we're looking. Okay, that's the bullish case. We're going to take a look at the bear case. All right now, we do have a buy signal here. We do have the histogram rising. Things do look good. And the bulls are in the driver's seat. We have the EMA5, SMA10 bull cross. That is exactly what you want to see. Okay, but what I, what I, I don't like is that she's stuck in this fat range. Okay, and she hasn't done anything for a while. And they're sitting at the 50 distributing or accumulating. You never know until hindsight. I will say is the momentum looks pretty good, but look, we just went through this and had a bull trap in August. And then what happened? Three months of selling into a new low. Brand new low in the sequence. So, you know, bear market here at least uh, one year and 11 months for IWM. Yeah, and so the problem with this is that there's just no actual trend. And if you look, here's an outside bearish reversal candlestick on the weekly, and we're about to put an EMA5 SMA10 bear cross. So not, not exactly the strength you're looking for. Bulls got back to the zero line, tried to flip up, came into the 50 a few times now, and just can't really muster any strength. So I view this as an ABC correction. This being the B wave just completed, and we're looking for essentially weakness into Valentine's Day. Something like that. OPEX for February, I think is the 23rd. That's kind of what I see here for IWM and IYT. I just want to point out IYT a little bit stronger. Okay, so we're either going to see this non-confirmation play out and see this bear market started back here way longer. So we've got a two year bear market and nearly a three year bear market in the transports. Okay, so if this thing's ready to roll, bull market is on and everything that we started this video with resumes, right? These perfectly symmetrical moves into June, into the summer, sell, in May and go away, something along those lines, then we would expect you know this to pretty much take us right into Q2, end of Q2. If we don't get the strength, 
then we would expect this to flip down like we're seeing here in IWM. That hasn't flipped down yet, and I'm going to zoom in quite a bit and turn everything else off just so that we all have a pretty picture. But I want to point out, right, here's the 200, here's the 50. They're all way down here. Here's the 80. Turn that off. All the short-term time frames are bullish, okay? Yellow, orange, green, that configuration, right, means bull. But it's an outside bearish reversal bar. And if they don't hold this area here, you're going to find more sellers and the 20 will be tested. And more specifically, that 185 level will be right back in play. And it'll happen in a hurry. And I want to point out that the histogram is waning. So we have seen a peak in momentum here in terms of rate of change. However, the blue line is still accelerating higher. So we don't have a peak there. But we also don't have a trend, more importantly. So avoid. That simple. Take a look at TLT. We just got the buy signal on the monthly. Okay. But we don't really have it yet on just clear these up. So we just got the buy signal down here. This PPO flipped up. Histogram positive, right? Those are both telling me to buy, but we don't have the EMA5 SMA10 bull cross yet. Okay. So we're getting somewhat conflicting data and we're still below a declining 20. Just like I just mentioned, right? Hey, bull configuration is yellow, orange, green in that order. Here we have green, orange, yellow. This is the bear configuration. So this is still in a bear market. This is a bear trend on the monthly time frame for bonds. And that's because this is in a bull market. TNX, 10 year, okay, pulled back to the rising 20. This is a bull configuration that's just about to put in that bear cross. <clears throat> Let's take a look at gold. Still here, continues to diverge. Okay, just need a direction. We don't have it yet. It's trying, it's really, really trying to break out. To me, it likely will go higher because she's hung out here for so long. That being said, as long as we stay above this green line, this is a bold configuration. Buy the dip is rewarded. It's been rewarded. May dip to 184 this week, but continues to be rewarded. Okay, UUP continues to be rewarded. Are people piling into cash? Here we do have a bear cross. EMA5, SMA10, bear cross. So, okay, cash might be short term. This monthly looks like a sell the rally in cash. Okay, so this is just, just what I'm seeing here. We'll take a look at Bitcoin. Monthly is by the dip. What do we have? Yellow, orange, green. That's a bull configuration, meaning any dips into these two are for buying, more specifically $37,000. Um, and ideally, it would be great to come all the way back down here to 31000 It would hurt, but structurally would be great. Weekly, putting in a sell signal, okay? So what does that mean? Let's revert to mean. This is a linear regression channel we're going to draw right now. Went to the top of the channel back to the middle held but should flag even if it flags in time and does not lose price needs to go sideways until when till may okay that's what we're seeing in bitcoin so if you look at iyt which might be breaking out which i really really like this chart the leader within iyt is uber okay i really really like this chart this is a name that you should be looking at. This is a name that I own, and this is a name that I am looking to buy and add to on any weakness. Where? $64, that would be great. All month long, 
clearly in an uptrend. I added here uh, this week here in January. I had a buy signal here for sure in October. And that I did not take, but I certainly was not avoiding here at $56. Okay, let's take a look at ARC. Is ARC putting in a failed breakout? Certainly could be. One of the leaders in ARC is DraftKings. Okay, so while ARC doesn't look too good, DraftKings looks great. I added DraftKings here around 31 bucks, 32 bucks at 20. Beautiful entries. Worked out quite well. Um, again, these are the names that I like. I like NVIDIA. I like DraftKings. All right, NVIDIA is going to the moon, guys. Got a ways to go still. I know it's tough for everyone to watch, and they're still so afraid to buy, which is why she'll go way higher. But even if you put a linear regression channel, you know, connecting these lows, something like that, 760. If this channel she's in right now holds, thousand bucks. Now, yeah, are we missing the end of the move? We are. And have I, am I already up around 500%? I am. But it's only the remaining quarter eighth of the position, whatever it ends up being at this point. But my point is, NVIDIA, there's plenty left. Right? Like if I'm buying the dip, if I see weakness in SPY, if, if it, you know, I'm buying these names, I'm not interested in IWM, right? XLF I'm interested in, XLF is doing pretty well. Look at the monthly buy signal we got, but she's not at all time highs like the others are. So why would I have this overweight? This would be underweight for the reasons I'm giving you right now. I mean, weekly, this is a trend. Why would I buy IWM? I'll just buy this. This looks great. I mean, I called this low right here and I called the breakout right here. Continue to be uh, underweight, but still looks great. Um, and JPM is the leader. All right, up 70%. Now from the October lows, up 30 percent and if you want you can just do the FAS from the October lows up almost 100 percent okay so XLF has done well provided plenty of opportunity <clears throat> XLE okay I think this is breaking down it's hard for me to tell this was the triangle and it looks like it broke bare I think technically, as long as she's above the $75 level, we can give her the benefit of the doubt. Um, but she's got to get above this green line to change the character. And the monthly, as you can see, right here, that time, put in put in the reversal. Okay, right here, histogram flip negative. Down here, negative is bad. This is where you get sell it until, until what? You get selling pressure until what? Until you get back down to the middle, All right down in here to the middle. So the zero line, that's where we would look for this correction to end or accelerate lower to the bottom. So actually just is not ready yet, All right? IWM, not ready yet. Maybe IWM's ready. IWM's a lot closer than XLE, but yeah, that's what I got. That's what I'm looking at. Um, let's take a look at some intermarket analysis real quick. Okay, here is SPY versus TLT. You can see, obviously, own equities. But this could be changing. Could be a little resistance up here. We'll see. But we don't have any change in trend. Absolutely not. Equities over bonds. Equities over gold accelerating right blue above red means bull and this mean in this uh, pair chart it means equities are being favored over gold equities are being favored over UUP which is cash okay this is telling me offense is on the team guys 
Equities are being favored over commodities. They're being favored over bonds. They're being favored over cash. They're being favored over gold. This is telling me that the offense is on the field. And when the offense is on the field, we like NVIDIA, DraftKings. Go watch the video.